So let's start off with Circle Geo. I mean, as you've seen, they love asking Circle Geo problems. A lot of the problems are using the theorems in reverse. You know, show it's a cyclic quadrilateral, so therefore you, know, you say things opposite angles are equal and so on. So that sort of idea. Um, the circle whose diameter is the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle passes through the third vertex. What's that saying? Well, if you can create a right angle triangle, then you must be able to create a circle that goes around those. Well, you can create a circle that goes through any three points. But the point is, if it's a right angle triangle, you know AB will be the diameter because of angle in a semicircle. So we can say, oh, yes, they can cyclic AB the diameter. And it's the same theorem. It's angle in a semicircle. We're just using it in reverse or the, the converse. Uh, so similar thing, if you notice that uh, a particular interval is subtending the same angle, again, they, they must be concyclic because you, you've got the angles in the same segment idea where AB would be the, the chord. So we know, yeah, it's a cyclic quad because the angle's in the same segment. Uh, you've got a quadrilateral and you notice that the opposite angles are supplementary or it might be an exterior angle equals an opposite interior angle. Again, you know they're going to be um, a, a cyclic quad. Now, the four centres of a triangle. Okay, the angle bisectors. Let's draw this up. There's a triangle. If we were to bisect each of the angles, then we create what's called the in-centre of a triangle. And that is the center of what we call the in circle. So the circle that's inside the triangle. Because if you look at it, what we've basically created there are three tangents. And we know the tangents from the external point, if you join it to the center, will create an axis of symmetry. So you've got that situation. Then you've got the uh, perpendicular bisectors. So again, here's the triangle. Draw in the perpendicular bisectors. They also will go through the same point, and that's what we call the circumcenter, because this time we create a circumcircle, circum meaning going around. And what we've created there is um, perpendicular from the center bisects the chords. So each of the sides of the triangle has become a chord, and because they were the perpendicular bisectors, where they meet must be the, the center. By the way, that's how you find the center of a circle, by the way. It's probably the easiest way of doing it, is draw up two chords, you only need two of them, and then find the perpendicular bisectors of both, where they meet, it's got to be the centre of the circle. Now the medians, the medians also meet, so the median, remember, is the, the line that joins the vertex to the midpoint of the other side, and that's what's called the centroid. The centroid has an interesting property. I didn't put it there. Any oh, I did write it there. There you go. It trisects. So it's in the ratio 1 to 2. So that will always be in the ratio 1 to 2. Yeah, that's what we call trisect. Bisect goes in the ratio 1 to 1. Trisects in the ratio 1 to 2. And the altitudes or the perpendicular heights, there we go, they also meet at the same point known as the orthocenter. The orthocenter. That note. All those centres, the circumcenter, the centroid and the orthocenter, are collinear. So they will lie on the same line, known as Euler's line. He gets a lot of credit, this Euler fella. All sorts of things named after him. That's what it was. Interaction between geometry and trig. The most common one we've seen so far is the sine rule. Uh, you may recall that, yes, it's A over sine A equals B over sine B, and so on, but it also equals the diameter of, not if, of the circumcircle. Uh, in fact, last year's paper, uh, there was a, the circle geometry question was basically proving this. Uh, so here is the proof. We put in the, the circumcircle. I'll draw in the diameter of that circle. And I know that angle A must equal angle P because angle is in the same segment. Uh, so therefore, the sine of A must equal the sine of P. They're the same angles. Now, PBC would be 90 degrees because we said PC was the diameter. So we've got angle in a semicircle. So therefore, BC over PC 
must be the sine of P. Rearranging that, BC over sine P is PC. Well, PC is the diameter of the circumcircle, and BC over sine P, well, sine P, remember, we said was the same as sine A. So we can now say, well, yes, the diameter is equal to BC. Another way of saying that is little a over sine A. And OK, I just did it for A, but I could have just as easily done it for B. You could have just as easily done it for C. OK, let's have a look at our past paper question from quite some time ago now. Um, we've got a fixed chord, so AB is not going to move. P is, could go anywhere on that arc. And we're told AC and AD are perpendicular to those respective lines. So the first part was a gold standard. Show it to cyclic quads. Um, all right, well, they've told me BDA and ACB are both 90 degrees. So there it is. That's all I really need, isn't it? Because that, therefore, means that the angles in the same segment are equal. Okay. Uh, oh, the additional piece, then, would be the diameter. Because not only are they equal, they're 90 degrees, which makes it the angle in a semicircle. PCD and APB. So I've drawn in CD there, so I can see the triangle that they're referring to. We're going to show they're similar. Well, APB and DPC, well, they're the same angle, so they're obviously equal, common angles. Uh, PDC is going to be the same as PBA, because now I know that that's a cyclic quad. I've got an exterior angle of a cyclic quad. Uh, so that's two angles. Oh, that's all we need for similar triangles. Once we've got two angles being the same, yes, we've got similar triangles, equiangular, angle angle, however you want to write your uh, reasoning down for that. Okay. So as P moves, CD will be of constant length. There's the two similar triangles. Just thought I'd draw them there because I figure, why did they get me to show they're similar? I'm probably going to use this. So I thought, okay, I'll draw them down. Now, ratio of sides. CD, that's the one we're trying to show, has got constant length. CD would correspond to AB and the other similar triangle. And I'm going to say, well, that's going to be the same as PC over AP, ratio of sides in similar triangles. So in triangle PCA, which we know is a right angled triangle, so I can say that PC over AP, that ratio, would be the cosine of angle P. <coughs> so therefore, CD over AB must also equal the cosine of P. So I now have the length of CD. I just got to prove or show that that's of constant value. Well, angle P is constant, because no matter where I put it, it's going to be angle in the same segment. And AB, they told me, was uh, constant. So therefore, I'm multiplying two constants together. So yes, the length of CD must end up being of constant value. Find the locus of the midpoint of CD. Now, I might have got a bit carried away with this, but here we go. ABCD is a cyclic quad. Um, we know AB is the diameter. So the midpoint of CD, well, I'll just call it M for midpoint. There it is. O, or the center of the circle that's going around our cyclic quad, is going to be the midpoint of AB. So OM must be constant. <coughs> because CD is constant. And equal chords are always equidistant to the center of the circle. So therefore, no matter where it ends up, OM is the distance of that chord. The chord's the same length. It's always got to be the same. So I know OM is constant. Well, hang on. Find the locus of M. M is a constant distance from another point O. Locus has got to be a circle. But as I say, I got a bit carried away. I thought, let's uh, actually define this circle a bit. 
So I'm going to find the radius and things like that. So I'm using Pythagoras there. I can say, well, OM squared is OC squared minus MC squared. Uh, just a little bit of calculation there. I can say, oh, that's a quarter AB squared sine squared. So uh, there's my uh, ra radius, a uh, half AB sine P. So like this is a circle, center O, radius a half AB sine P. They probably just wanted that it was a circle, but hey, that was fun. Here's the 2008 question. All right, so they're setting it up for us. P, Q and R are all on the circle. PT is a tangent. Then we have a secant QT. The uh, bisector of PQR and so on. Right. Okay. First part, show that TPS is the same as TSP. TPS, TSP. Well, I know RQP and RPT are the same. That's just my classic alternate segment theorem. I mean, whenever I see a tangent in a triangle, it's probably the first one I'm going to identify, you know, alternate segment theorem. TSP will be RQP plus SPQ, exterior angle of a triangle. TSP is RPT plus theta. SPT is RPT plus theta, common angle. Therefore, SPT and TSP are the same. Okay. Hence show that 1 on A equals 1 on B plus 1 on C. Hmm. I think the diagram could be useful to have again. So there's our diagram. We now know that TPS is isosceles. Because right? we've said SPT is the same as TSP. Now, ST, therefore, is equal to C. Using our endpoint of the chord to the point of intersection times endpoint of the chord to the point of intersection equals endpoint of the chord to the point of intersection times endpoint of the chord to the point of intersection theorem. PT squared must be QT times RT. Or more formally, the square of the tangents is equal to the product of the intercepts. Okay, so PT, well that's C, QT. QT would be ST, which we've just said is C, plus B. And RT would be ST, which we've just said is C, minus A. Okay, so C squared, expand the right-hand side out. C squared, all the C squareds are going to cancel. I get BC is AC plus AB. Hmm, I'm trying to prove that. So if I now divide everything by ABC, we get our result. Yeah. Okay. So, well, we're now at the stage, I guess, where past HSC papers is going to be a good source for the harder extension uh, questions for circle geometry. Cambridge exercise 10A. In Patel, it's 10C. 